Did Google just create a quantum computer that could destroy all blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. All right, so hey, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to build blockchain technology. But you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. If you're just curious about blockchain, then this video is for you. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. So I've been really excited about the news that Google just created a computer that has achieved quantum supremacy. All right, so what is that? This is the creation of a quantum computer that's able to perform computations that's practically impossible for a classical one to perform, all right? So don't worry if you don't understand what a quantum computer is. I'm gonna explain all that here in a minute. The announcement came in a paper that was reportedly published on the NASA website before being pulled. To our knowledge, this experiment marks the first computation that can only be performed by a quantum processor. So why is this a big deal? Well, for one, this is a hard nut that people have been trying to crack for a really long time, all right? And Google just claims to have done it. And number two is that quantum computers pose a serious security threat to blockchains, right? And not just blockchains, but anything that uses cryptography to secure it, right? Like passwords or encrypted communication or anything like that that we use on the web today. So how does quantum computing threaten blockchains? Well, blockchains achieve security through encryption, okay? That's why we call it cryptocurrency. So wallets on the blockchain are encrypted, all right? So if you own Bitcoin, you have a private key, and that private key is like a password that allows you to access your account and access your funds and send Bitcoin around to somebody else by signing transactions. And your account will be vulnerable if someone could break the encryption. And also, all the transactions on the blockchain are contained in bundles of records called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain, okay? And each block on the blockchain contains a hash of the previous block, and the block before that, and the block before that, all way back to Genesis block. And if you could break this encryption, then you could change the history on the blockchain and, you know, give yourself money or something like that, okay? If you could crack encryption in either of these scenarios, then you would basically render the entire blockchain ineffective, all right? So how would you do it? Well, breaking the encryption requires a lot of guesswork. That's why it's secure in the first place, okay? So let's take the example of your account and your private key. If you were to try to break into my wallet and steal my funds, you could theoretically guess my private key and try to match it with the public key or the account address uh, and take the money that way. But it would take you a really long time. You would spend years and years and years and years and your kids and your kids and your kids uh, trying to guess before you probably found the right answer, right? Same thing for a supercomputer. It would take... Uh, a very powerful classical computer right now, t like thousands of years to try to break the encryption that's used to uh, secure your Bitcoin wallet. And that's one of the reasons we consider our cryptographic algorithm secure. It's because it would take, you know, a classical computer way too long to try to do the guesswork required to break the encryption. And also even more so for changing the history on the blockchain. If you were to go back in time and, you know, change uh, one of the blocks, you would have to change every single block after that in the history all the way up to the present point. So this is called a 51% attack, which means that you would need uh, control of 51% of the entire compute power on the network in order to break the history of the blockchain. And this is also something that's currently impossible with classical computing. All right, in both these scenarios, you simply don't have enough time given the current amount of horsepower uh, provided by classical computing, all right? And that's the key. Time is the big limiter. But quantum computers take seconds to do what classical computers could take, you know, thousands of years to do. And Google claims that Sycamore, its quantum computer, performed a task in just a few minutes that it would take 10,000 years for the most powerful supercomputer to perform. So is this a threat to blockchain? Well, let's try to break it down. All right, let's analyze it. All right, and I'll give you a quick disclaimer. I'm not an expert in quantum computing, but I'm gonna give you my high level analysis and uh, try to break this down in a way that seems to check out with what other experts are saying, all right? So how does a quantum computer work? Well, a classical computer uh, at the very lowest level uses bits, all right? After everything filters down into binary bytes and bits, the very lowest level are the bits. And those bits can exist in uh, you know, either a state of either one or zero, all right? So a quantum computer works differently a quantum computer uses something else called a qubit. Through quantum mechanics, it can achieve superposition, which means it can be in multiple states at once, all right? This means it's not really in one or zero. It's a little bit maybe in one or the other. It could be 95% one and 5% zero or vice versa or any combination, right? Quantum computers can achieve an infinitely greater capacity for computation as compared to classical computers. So can these computers take down blockchains? Well, that depends on how many qubits you have. So I like this talk from Andreas Antonopoulos. He did a Q&A session uh, where someone asked him, you know, is, is quantum computing a threat? And this person was assuming that quantum computing was, you know, far off in the future and wondering, like, if we eventually got to that point, would it threaten blockchain technology? This was before the whole Google thing came out, right? And I really like how he answered this person, right? So he said, basically, we probably already have quantum computers inside intelligence agencies, but we just don't know. It's really hard to measure, and even if we do have them, we don't know if they have enough power to break blockchains. You know, he says that if you possessed a quantum computer, you wouldn't want someone else to know about it. So he gave the example of 
of like, what if you had a quantum computer that could crack this, the encryption on the security codes for all the nuclear weapons in the world? Well, you wouldn't want to use that computer uh, to take down Bitcoin, right? That would look like a pretty small fish compared to the ability to keep the entire world safe or something like that, right? So there's lots of reasons why if you had a quantum computer that could do this kind of thing, you wouldn't tell anybody. So he thinks these agencies, you know, might have quantum computers, but we don't necessarily know how powerful they are because they haven't had any reason to use them yet. But what about the computer that Google just created? Does it, does it have enough horsepower to actually kill a blockchain? Well, let's try to measure it, okay? So this says that Google's quantum computer Sycamore consisted of only 54 qubits, all right? One of which didn't work. So do I think that Google's supercomputer is going to take down blockchains? No, I don't think so. So I don't know the exact number, but you would need way more horsepower than provided by 54 qubits on a quantum computer in order to take down the Bitcoin blockchain. So I'm not exactly sure what the number is. Like I said, I'm not a quantum computing expert. If you are, leave a comment down in the comment section below and let us know what you think. And hey, just shoot me an email because I'd love to have you on this channel to talk more about this uh, topic. So yeah, I think quantum computers just aren't there yet in order to break blockchains, all right? And there's lots of other problems. There's lots of other things that need to be solved in order for quantum computers to really take off. Like right now, they're really brittle. Uh, the qubits are very delicate. Like even small temperature changes can throw them out of superposition. Uh, so there's lots of reasons why they could fail, all right? We even saw this article that... Uh, uh, one of the qubits on Google's supercomputer Sycamore didn't even work. Okay? So is this a huge milestone? Yes. I don't want to discredit this giant leap forward. Uh, but we still have a lot of ways to go, okay? And I think, at least for now, blockchains are safe. But should we be thinking about the long term? Of course we should, right? If you go back to this talk uh, from Andreas, he talks about the real risk in quantum computing is not like, does someone have it right now? He talked about how these intelligence agencies might even have it, right? But the real risk is when it becomes commercially available, but not widely distributed, right? If a small number of people have commercial quantum computers, that could be a threat. And when that time comes, we're definitely going to have to respond to it. He proposes that Bitcoin would have to change its uh, encryption algorithms uh, to support this, right? And when that time comes, it's not just blockchains that are in trouble, right? Anything that relies upon encryption right now on the web is going to have to adapt, right? All your passwords are basically going to be useless at that point. Uh, and this is a great article that talks about, you know, what you're going to have to do in an era of post-quantum cryptography. And another experimental uh, thing is, you know, if we have quantum computers, can we just create quantum blockchains? And I'm sure there's lots of uh, work to be done before we could do something like that. But that's another idea how to fight against the problem. All right, so if y'all like this video, uh, click the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.